Bond movies are deeply ensconced in our culture, especially here in the UK. As a 25th film, we did a lot of thinking about what were the best moments that we'd seen in Bond movies and um, how would we pull some of those together for this final one for Daniel. James Bond. To be designing a Bond movie is a real privilege and it's sort of a treat. We're looking for new inventions, new ideas, a bit of scale, glamour, things that are sort of extraordinary. There's really a special feeling you're hit with when you step on a 007 soundstage and onto a set like that. We need these fantastic sets that, to set the scene for us, and, and Mark Tilsley is just, you know, one of the best in the world. We have come to Jamaica. We've built in, uh, in this bay, Coco Bay, we've built Bond's house. This is um, Bond, who is now in retirement, has come back to a Bond spiritual home. Some of the kind of design features that you'll see in this house are taken from Fleming's villa. We've also got a reproduction of Fleming's desk in James Bond's bedroom. But what we wanted to do with this place was make it a little bit more rough and ready. The best way of achieving the look for us was to actually build it with local Jamaican guys. It has this kind of real local feel to the design of the place. The really tricky thing about this location is that there is no road. All of our materials had to come in by boat, so we had to actually build a pier here, and that was our not only part of our set, but also the access for everything you see on this set. The most famously stylish man in the world needing to kind of blend in and not look as stylish as he normally does, but kind of still needs to look stylish. Everything he owned, we wanted it to feel like he had, to his core, intuition about style, but he doesn't think about it too much, it's just there. I wanted him to look like who he is. He's a bit older, he's a bit wiser. He doesn't run through quite as many walls as he used to, you know, he might take the door off its hinges. I wanted her Nomi to have her own very strong, very self-possessed, sharp look. Whatever she was wearing, she'd have to be at the ready. Her clothes needed to be as stylish and utilitarian in the same measure as Bond's clothing was. Sutramak reads people really easily and quickly. She worked with my height, my shape, um, my skin tone, everything I felt like was just complementing who I was. Cuba was obviously at one time really wealthy and exotic. But now there's this sense of faded grandeur. It's even more exciting now. It's look like looking at ancient Rome or something. We weren't able to do this in Cuba because there's a lot of fight work and all sorts of action that was going to be involved. So we had to build it. There are 12 buildings on the Cuban set. Every building has a different purpose. The El Nido Bar is a specifically designed building using many references that we found in Havana. That building is one of the hero buildings, so therefore we had to adapt it in a certain way that worked for the action, lots of stunt action. We wanted this grand classic romantic staircase. It's a very famous restaurant in Cuba, but it has a road that runs underneath the staircase and um, we wanted to try and emulate that. There was a definite deco feel that Carrie wanted, so you can see the sort of deco-esque lights. With the true Latin American feel, it's a very, very tall building. We're using all the elements and nothing's to waste here. This is a truly hero building for a bomb sequence. I am Cuban and I know exactly how Cuba looks like and I think it's very hard to recreate a country like this this decadent aspect of it. So much color and it's so rich and the pass of time. 
It was really impressive, the level of detail on the scale of the set. It was a 360 functional set with entire buildings. It was like an immersion into Cuba. The Spectre event was a particularly juicy and satisfying part of the design process for us. It's one of those parts of the story where the costumes are giving you as much of the environment, I think, as the set is. It also made Bond and Paloma make sense to me. They're like these sort of iconic silhouettes in the middle of all this noise. I wanted the noise to feel a little seedy, a little dark, a little dangerous. The tux is probably the most iconic of the James Bond wardrobe looks. Tom Ford has a handful of shapes, and we wanted to devise something that was specific to Daniel, so we took the best parts of some things that existed with a new version of a suit that they're currently developing. It was an amalgamation of those things. With Paloma, we wanted to make sure that she stood out from the crowd but was embedded. We knew that we wanted to probably have a diamond moment for her. Whatever the dress was couldn't sort of steal the thunder of the diamonds. Lots of Chopard pieces to choose from. It was really hard, but I felt like we found the right touch for her. However, the diamonds couldn't be the only thing that we were looking at, and she needed to look as a stunning whole package. The surprise of her being able to conduct all these crazy stunts in what seems like a diaphanous dress is the strength of that costume and that character. Mark's sets were breathtaking. He designed a poison garden for my character that felt like the greatest playground a villain could ask for. The detail and scale and scope of his work harkens back to those iconic Ken Adams sets, but with a modern twist. For our finale, our third act, we arrive at the lair of Safin. His family have brought from the Russians an island. For that, we've had to invent this island on which there is a testing plant of giant silos. And underneath the silos, when you open the, the missile doors, you go down below into a, a giant concrete brutalist subterranean factory. So we have that classic Ken Adam circular door that were opened to let the missile out. In many brutalist buildings, the lines are quite simple and bold. And I think the trick in that world is really not to over-elaborate it and keep it really simple so that it becomes really a sort of sculpture about light and dark. And that sort of forms a graphic language where you're seeing these very clean and simple shapes. We use that language, the Bond language of the sort of jumpsuit and these algae farm workers in pink inside our very monochromatic giant labyrinth. I found a picture of a Japanese designer, of Isemiyaki, kind of at his drafting table. There was something about this image that was sort of severe and serious, almost like I'm the architect of the world. And there was something about Seifen's character that had a sort of gentle arrogance like that. This image it became the leaping off point for all the choices that we ended up making. Sutra is the definition of collaboration. Safin is such a meticulously evil person, and I love how Sutra brought that meticulous precision to every one of his costumes. It's a real tribute, and it's quite fun to do the classic Bond sets, like M and Moneypenny's office. Each time that set comes about, it's evolved. Each design team adds a little piece. So we slightly adjusted the color of the lever on the door, and then we made a new painting. But fundamentally, the desk and everything else, it has been the same for a long time. So you just try and keep it in the same language. The sets are other characters in the movie, and they're really powerful um, characters and because they set the tone for everything. Mark 
is just transporting us into the world that he's created every single time. He's literally giving us exactly what we need as actors to feel and sense and experience what our characters would be at every given moment. What I'm interested in is whether the film as a whole, with all its parts and pieces, is thrilling. The story, the lighting, the action is important. In fact, the performance is most important. So hopefully we've given the performers worlds that they felt excited by and involved in. And that will come out when we watch the film. I'm immensely proud of it because of just the huge collective effort that goes into making a Bond movie and being just a small part of that. It's an honor to be in that position.